clinical care pathway uh, is a concept that is coming up. Uh, we, we are talking about it today because uh, we know that there are a lot of areas in this uh, scientific area or uh, scientific concern that we have where there are no guidelines. There are no clear recommendations. There are no clear evidence-based suggestions that we have that you do this, you do this, you do this, you do that. And uh, we have been discussing since morning and uh, we find that we have less time to discuss because there is so much more to discuss. There is so much more that many people know that uh, all of us are not able to hear them because lack of time. And that is why I think clinical care pathways are a wonderful way to uh, fill the gap of not knowing and not having recommendations so that we can discuss the clinical care pathway. We can uh, come to terms with certain things that we must do. There are certain things that we can do provided a given situation. And there are certain things that we should not waste our time and resources on. I think clinical care pathway is about that, that we come to uh, a kind of uh, agreement on what is to be done what uh, may be done if situation permits and what may not be done if we do not have the enough resources or time. So what we decided was uh, we'll discuss the clinical care pathway for assessment or evaluation of a woman with obesity. And then we'll go, uh, Doctor. I'll invite Dr. Vidya to talk about what is the pathway that we take for the management of such a woman. Now, uh, taking a hypothetical patient of, let's say, 25 to 30 years old, and she has come to us, and we see that the woman uh, is obese. This is a very uh, traumatic word, I would say, to call someone or to label someone obese. But what we need to see when a woman who is uh, overweight or who is coming to us with obesity, what we need to look for, what we need to evaluate. One, as a clinician, we would always like to evaluate what is the reason why the woman has gained weight or has become obese. Second is what health risk she has or maybe what complications she already has uh, by the time that she has come to us. And third, a very important aspect of a woman of a 25 to 30 years of age, what we call is that, call it as uh, not 25 to 30, but a reproductive age group. When the woman is coming to us, we also need to talk about her sexual and reproductive health. I think it's more relevant uh, to the women gender than men now. And that is why I think all three aspects need to be evaluated when an obese girl comes to us. So there are th there is a proposal of evaluating the cause of obesity in terms of history of pattern and duration of weight gain. Then we have medications, thyroid dysfunctions, Cushing syndrome, hypothalamic causes, growth hormone, PCOS, dysmorphic forms of obesity. There is a whole clinical case that can be made, but what we need to evaluate is whether it is a um, constitutional obesity or the obesity is caused by certain hormonal or non-hormonal uh, secondary causes. So I think evaluating for secondary causes of obesity Evaluate and uh, we'll uh, ask one of the discussions to talk about who are the people in whom secondary causes for obesity need to be uh, looked for. So when we discuss, we would like our discussions to talk about it. Obesity related risk factors, I think Dr. Uh, the previous panel also said us that we need to evaluate for metabolic health uh, risks, we need to evaluate for uh, mental uh, related health and we need to evaluate for the mechanical uh, health risks that are associated with obesity. So uh, in we can divide these patterns, uh, uh, these parameters in these three patterns. And then sexual and reproductive health, uh, whether they have menstrual abnormalities, polycystic ovarian disease, what are the plans for their uh, conception, what, um, what treatment they are on which might not be suitable for planning pregnancies, when do we stop them, shift them on medications that are safe during pregnancies, the medication during the pregnancy, the short and long term uh, effect of their current illness on their, uh, contra, uh, on their concept, uh, the reproductive health as well as the health of the next uh, generation that would be, um, will be planning. And then when it comes to the individual sexuality, 
we also uh, are nowadays dealing with a lot of uh, people coming it with uh, transgenders and uh, gender uh, identity um, issues so that is another thing that can be added to the list so i think this is a clinical care pathway that is proposed this is no way exhaustive there is so many things that can be added but this is what i think uh, should give us a guideline to start with and then we can keep adding parameters to this